There's lots of advice out there. Post on Instagram every day, start a Pinterest, create a course, but actually maybe not, maybe it's too late, don't do that. What if 2024 was the year that you started listening to yourself? This is Founders Journal. What's up and welcome back to the Freelance Friday podcast. This is the first mini-sode of the year. This is Founders Journal where I'll be checking in, kind of sharing some things that I'm going through in my business that will hopefully help you with yours. And I've been doing a lot of thinking, as I'm sure all of us have been, about what I really want 2024 to look like. I think that when we get in these planning, dreaming, you know, phases of our business, a lot of us tend to default to doing one of two things. We either look at what everybody else is doing, or we only focus on external views of success, right? Which tend to be financial or sometimes not even financial. Sometimes they're like, you know, clout for lack of better words, right? How many likes am I getting? How popular am I? Which doesn't pay the bills on its own. Last year in the Freelance Friday Club, I did a workshop called Freelance Fresh Start. And I wanted to share with you that template. It'll be linked for you down below in the show notes if you wanna go through this on your own. But I kinda wanted to share with you what was on my Freelance Fresh Start planning template and how I am able to create these goals that come from a really good place internally, not just kind of what I think other people think I should be doing. The first thing I always recommend doing when thinking about any type of goals or planning is think about what you really care about. And this was an exercise I did with my therapist a long time ago. It was coming up with my top values, the most important values to me. There's an assessment that is linked in this worksheet for you, Or you can just kind of look through this list that I've already pre-populated for you and just pull out anything that stands out as important to you. So my top values are health, creativity, um, success, peace, and inner harmony. So really the only financial type goal that is listed on there or financial type value that I see is success. And even that success can take a lot of different forms, right? It doesn't have to just be financial success. So I'm already going into my 2024 thinking, don't just think about the money, Latasha. Last year, you were really stressed out, even though you had this wildly successful financial year. I think that the two can coexist. I think that there are ways that I can find more inner harmony and more peace while still having that financial success, but I need to make sure that I'm keeping those other things at the forefront so that I'm not burning myself out and making myself unhappy just for the sake of money, which isn't even on my list. Now let's dig deeper into that, right? What are the offers that you created? What are the offers that you provided last year? And think about them in two different ways. Think about them financially, yes, because again, that's what separates a business from a fancy hobby. So how much of your revenue did that represent? But then also think about how that made you feel. For me, Social Media Management Accelerator, my cohort course was about 20% of my revenue. I felt good about it, but I did feel like it was a grind and I felt like I didn't I didn't feel well compensated for it, for the amount of time, energy, effort that I put into everything. It just didn't add up to me. So that's something that I need to explore this year. Do we raise the rates on it? Do we limit the number of students that are in it? Do I only offer it once, right? So there are lots of things that we can play around with and think about, and I don't know the answer to that yet. Sponsorships, 30% felt good, but a little bit hectic and uncertain. So how can I continue to build relationships, long-term relationships with partners where we are able to sign annual deals and I can rest and relax and breathe a little bit. That's a big goal for me this year. You can watch my whole revenue streams video on YouTube if you want the full breakdown. Then I go into marketing and same thing here. I wanna think about what was effective, what marketing actually drove traffic, what actually moved the needle for me, and how did that marketing make me feel? Because marketing, if you're tuning into this, you are probably a creative person. You are probably, you know, a good person. I like to think we have like the best community ever. Those of us that are creatives or that do care about the actual, you know, intention behind our work can have a hard time marketing ourselves. So how does that make you feel? Marketing doesn't have to feel like an energy drain. It doesn't have to feel like something that you hate. So lean into the things that you like. For me, email didn't feel great for me either. I think I need to segment my list a little bit better. I think I need to 
write more engaging emails, you know, shake some things up with emails because it didn't feel great whenever I sent an email and I maybe got a couple of responses back if if I was lucky, you know, Instagram didn't feel good at all. TikTok didn't really feel great, although I did feel like I had some some success with TikTok just from repurposing my long form podcasts and YouTube videos, which did feel really good because everybody told me in 2020, 2021, 2022, everybody told me you cannot build a TikTok from repurposing content. I mean, I'm not like TikTok famous by any means, but I built my TikTok up to 4,000 primarily from repurposing content. And I can commit to continuing to do that. I'm not going to like you know, dance around in a crop top and and try to be TikTok famous. That's just not going to work for me. Now, what did feel really good this year was the podcast. If there's something like that for you, think about how can I scale this? You know, I've been doing the podcast once weekly since 2018. Why haven't I scaled that? Why am I not doing more of that? Why am I not shaking up the format if I'm having fun, if I'm feeling creative and if I'm getting results from it, you know? So that's what I'm trying out, at least for January. I'm going to try out three weekly episodes. Two of them are going to be mini episodes, short ones, hopefully under 10 minutes max. We're going to bring in guests. We're going to bring in some more engaging formats. So don't worry, they won't all just be like this. And then we'll keep the Friday episode as as normal. We're going to test it. We're going to see how it goes. We're going to see if people like it. If the audience likes it, please do let me know if you do. And we're going to see how I feel about it. If it's something that I can keep up with, if I enjoy doing, and if it moves the needle at all in terms of marketing, look at your traffic, look at traffic opportunities, think about that. And then think about what, you know, when you, when you put all of that together, what can you eliminate? If anything, what should you do more of? My advice is to dig deep, Think about what really matters to you because we all have different goals. There are different things that matter to us all. And I think taking too much advice from experts on the internet, even from me, isn't always great because we value different things. If you, your number one measure of success is money, then I might not be the right person for you because while I can teach you to make a lot of money, I think I can. I have made more money in my life than ever I thought I would. It's not what fuels me. I enjoy the process. I enjoy creating. I enjoy having fun. I took a lot of bad advice. I think last year I was in some groups with people who didn't align, you know, who valued money over everything. And I started getting advice on how to cheap out basically and how to, you know, sell more by doing less. And honestly, I'm lucky I didn't really take much of that advice because when I even thought about doing it, it just felt bad. I was like, I love putting love and energy and care and time and creativity into my offers. I don't want to cheap out. I don't want to do less. I don't want to get a ghostwriter for my book. I don't want to outsource everything. And, you know, maybe that's a silly thing. Maybe that is something that I should be doing to make more money, but that doesn't feel right for me. So I encourage you to listen to you, listen to your values, listen to how you feel about doing all these things and make your plan based off of that. I'll leave the template, the freelance fresh start template down in the show notes for you. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you care to share anything that you've done, feel free to reach out. You can check out the Freelance Friday Club at freelancefriday.club. Just type that into your browser, freelancefriday.club. You can share your worksheet in there and chit chat with myself in the community. I thank you so much for tuning in today and I will talk to you very soon for a new episode. Bye.